Hey, keep them up! Keep them coming back! Hands up! Hands up, passenger! Oh yeah. my god, thank you! <laughs> Okay. Cops sometimes catch criminals only after a crime has been committed. But what happens when cops catch kidnappers in the middle of their crimes? Here are five times kidnappers were caught during their criminal acts. Starting with the disturbing case of William Mozingo. Hey, hey, sir, sir. On October 16, 2023, police arrived at a residence after reports that a man was holding a girl captive in their garage. You know he's in there for a fact? I know for a fact. Can you, can you kick your door? Can you I kick swear it in? to God, go ahead. Please, just, I don't know what's wrong with this girl. Oh, there's a girl in there with him? Yes. I told them this. I told them this. Mm -hmm. There's a girl in there. She's very slim. Very slim. My husband said he didn't really get a good look at her. But he's yelling at her. The homeowner explained to the police that her husband had gone into their garage at night only to find a former friend who they had since lost contact with. While speaking to William, the husband kept hearing a faint voice from the garage, and peering in, he saw a woman in her 20s looking physically battered. So he went into the house and called the police the next morning. Noticing how much time had passed, it was unclear if the victim was still in the garage and if the kidnapper had inflicted more damage on her or worse, killed her. We better come up! Come on, guys! Your hands up! Come on! Come on! Will you come on now? I can pull it! Now! Now! Get your bit, buddy! Okay. Coming out or not? Can you see him? Get out here now! Come on now! Come on now! Bro, you're gonna get fucked up in a second. You better come the right the fuck out now. Now! Hey! Just keep coming. Face around. that way! Just keep coming. Watch your step. Right there. You get that? Come on, there's a female. There's a female there. Come on out here. Man, like you're pregnant. Come out, please. Can I get shoes? Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Mozingo was held at gunpoint by more than a dozen cops, and he had no choice but to surrender and be put in cuffs. While the cops knew about the female abductee, they had to make sure that there were no other threats in the garage, so they hesitated to get in, but with no one in sight, they realized how time-sensitive the case was. Okay, what do you need to get down? Why don't you have a sit right seat right there? Why don't you have a sit right seat right there on this? Yeah, probably where she at. Okay, I'll sit there. Yeah. Why don't you just sit down there? Oh, we'll the arrest reports identified the abductee as 23-year-old Chloe Jones and revealed that Mozingo had held her in the garage for four days without water, where he repeatedly hit her with a baseball bat and poured gasoline on her, threatening to light her up if she screamed for help. Step on up there. Surprisingly, this wasn't Mazingo's first kidnapping case. 
He was first jailed for abduction in 2011 and went on to get arrested four more times within that decade, with the last arrest coming after imprisoning a 29-year-old ex-girlfriend at his home, beating her, strangling her, and holding a knife to her throat. His recent abductee was rather unfortunate as he offered her a ride home, but instead took her to the garage where she incurred heavy trauma and a fractured skull. I want to tell like the young girls don't from, you know, across America, like it's not safe to get in, you know, cars with people you don't know or meet up with. It was terrifying, you know, like being in fear for your life, like countless of times, times I can even count of like how many. What got you through? My son did. I thought about him every day. I just saw his little... Mazingo is currently being held on a 100,000 bond at Summit County Jail ahead of his next court appearance on charges including kidnapping, abduction, assault, unlawful restraint, and parole violation, which could earn him a much-anticipated life sentence. ending her life. You don't deserve to, you know, get to live life the way normal people should, and I hope that I hope that there is something that will come to light. While he was taken away in cuffs, William was recorded saying, I love you, Chloe. This was disturbing to the officers considering what he had done to her. But that wasn't as disturbing as Jack Morgan's attitude after being caught kidnapping. On January 30th, 2017, police received a report from a Las Vegas residence that a man dragged his female neighbor into a white van before driving off. Immediately, officers began a search for the vehicle and 12 hours later, traced the car 1,000 miles away in New Mexico. Officers were then dispatched to the location in an attempt to ensure the victim's safety and arraign the suspected male kidnapper. But they were in for quite the shock. Passenger! There is a passenger! There is a passenger! Before locating the vehicle, Las Vegas police arrived at the home of the abductee where they found signs of a struggle at the apartment, including a taser and a knife left at the scene. And with confirmation that there were two abductors in the vehicle, the officers were tasked with detaining two kidnappers suspected to be armed and extremely dangerous. Open the door, outside. Get out of the way, get out Hey, keep them up! Keep them coming back! Stop! Get on your knees! Keep your hands up! Put your hands behind your head and your legs your fingers. Okay. The crossbar! Is there anyone else in there? Yes, there's one person. Watch it, there's movement. Don't move. Don't you move. Yes, sir. Stay down. Yes, sir. She's in there. Don't Help you her. move. Help her. Make sure. Yeah, go ahead and clear the rest of the car. Both suspects were cuffed and placed in the squad cars, but the officers' jobs were far from over. During the arrest, they could hear screams for help coming from the back seat of the vehicle, and when they got closer, they witnessed a horrid sight. Well, yeah. Put a camera on this thing. Got a camera. Do you need a... Oh yeah. my God, thank you. <laughs> okay, is that it? Rolling? Okay, it's rolling. Okay, okay we're going to get a shot of here, okay? We're gonna get out of here. Do you need me to say anything about what happened or anything? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about Just it. Just hold on for now, okay? Just hold on, okay? We're gonna get some pictures and we're gonna get you out, okay? Sarge, I'm gonna take some pictures. We have the evidence. He's tight chained down. 
by the neck. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, make sure we get photographs. Of yeah, that's what I want to do. I don't want to. And yeah. she understands what I'm going to do. Okay. So she's cool with it. Okay. No, let's okay. Yes, let's back him up. The abductee, later identified as Jane Preeb, was hunched over with her wrists handcuffed to a neck collar and her legs bound by padlocked chains. It took the officers an entire minute to get the chains off, and when that happened, Preeby detailed to the officers the horrific plans of her abductors. I was in Las Vegas. He broke into my Las Vegas apartment and stole me from my home. Las Vegas, New Mexico? Nevada. Nevada? He fucking hauled ass. Do you know the guy? Yeah, he's, he's my ex-boyfriend. How did you know? They called us and told us. Who did? I was up at the office trying to run him, see if we had anything on him. Oh my god. I went to the police and I fought so fucking hard because I was like, this is how you die. And I think a neighbor saw me getting dragged out. Mm -hmm. He choked me out like six times because I kept fighting so hard. Okay, did you lose consciousness when he was choking you? Yes, like six. He choked me out six times. Okay. You guys want During the trip from Las Vegas to New Mexico, Brown explained to Preby the abduction plan she and Morgan had worked on for approximately a year and three months, which included creating fake social media accounts to track, follow, and stalk Preby. According to arrest reports, the final destination was the New Mexico cave where Morgan would brainwash her to be his wife. After narrating her traumatizing experience, Preby was taken to an ambulance with the hopes of alleviating her physical and psychological injuries. But although there was a lot pitted against her abductors already, their actions only displayed just how psychopathic and unremorseful they were. Got a favorite hymn? What's that? You got a favorite hymn? No, I don't. Why not? I don't know. I've never been into them. Uh, what about you? What about Amazing Grace? You like that one? I'll take it. chances I can get those. I'm pretty sure. It's gonna your vehicle's gonna be right up the road anyway, so let's get this one first. Police station? We are. I've never been there. You ever been to a, to a police station or this police station? Well I mean I've never been in a police station period. I don't know. Okay. Jack Morgan and Samuel Brown were charged with kidnapping, false imprisonment, and conspiracy. In March 2018, Samuel Brown was sentenced to five years and three months in prison, while Jack Morgan was sentenced to spend the rest of his life in prison. But Kevin Smith was caught in a very disgraceful manner. He's not your car? Step out of the car. On October 10th, 2022, an officer patrolling the streets of Hillsboro, Florida, was suddenly flagged down by a man with frightening claims that his car was stolen with his two underage children still inside. Immediately after hearing this report, the officer went in pursuit of the vehicle, and it wasn't too long before he found the stolen car with the unknown carjacker and suspected kidnapper. Stop the truck! Now! Pull into the parking lot! Roll the window down. Why are you doing with the kids? What's going on? Roll the window down, bro. He's not your car? No, Step out of the car. The cop confronted the suspect 
and questioned him regarding the alleged abduction of the four- and eight-year-old children, to which he did not answer. But the eight-year-old was not as silent as he confirmed to the cop that the suspect stole the car and was not their father. Realizing he was caught red-handed, the once non-responsive suspect suddenly became defensive. Step out of the car, bro. Okay, step out of the car. Help me out here. Is not you? All right, let me let me figure it out. Okay, put that bottle away. Put that bottle away. Okay, put, put that bottle away. Okay, and then I just step out of the car and help me out. Okay? What do you mean, not you? Okay. So let me figure out. I don't know what's going on. So step, step out till you figure it out. Uh, you're gonna step out. I cannot leave you. Give me the car keys. Give me the car keys. Give me the car keys. I know where your dad is. I saw him running this way. The cop found Kevin's case to be disturbing. He was in a car reported stolen with two kids who cried out that he was not their father and he had kidnapped them. But that didn't stop him from denying that he had committed a crime while looking extremely guilty and charged. He was cornered and had enough evidence against him to remain behind bars for a long time. But he still tried to play dumb. All right, step out. I don't know. I, I step out. I need to figure out. I cannot let you in the car. But step out, you're going to punch me. I'm not gonna punch you, bro. I just yes, gonna, I just, will. no, I promise you. you will. I, is this? Yeah, yeah. All right, step out of the car. Close my dad. Step out of the car, bro. Step out of the car. Bro. Kevin appeared to think he could negotiate his way out of the situation, but with evidence of his crimes all around him, he had only two options: to get down willingly or be dragged out. Step out of the car. Stay here. I need to figure out what's going on, that's all. The suspect was arrested and taken to the county jail. It wasn't clear what his intentions with the children were, but Kevin faces one count of grand theft motor vehicle and two counts of felony kidnapping. Interestingly enough, he has a criminal history dating back to 2003 in the same county and is currently incarcerated without bond. But as annoying as this suspect's pretense was, the next suspect was an even greater pain to the cop. How old are you? If I ask you that question again, I'm going to lose my... On February 19th, 2021, police received alarming reports from a woman that her 13-year-old granddaughter never came home or went to her basketball game after school. Investigations immediately began, and cops were informed by the missing girl's friend that the victim was planning on going to a motel with someone she met online, and that she may have been picked up at a Dollar General store around town. Basically, I'm missing a, um, a juvenile left school and um, possibly was picked up by a guy here. I'm kind of wanting to get an idea of who he is, and I'm looking at today from school gets out around 3.15ish, so I'm thinking 3 to 3.30. And then they've got like a super, super recent picture there? She says she looks pretty much like this. It, might, it looks pretty close to her. I can, yeah, I can see... The cop looked through the surveillance video of the dollar store where he saw the missing girl waiting for someone. The only information he had about the man who allegedly picked her up was that his name started with a T and that he was from Orlando. So the officer began visiting area motels, showing the front desk clerks a photo of the missing girl and searching the day's check-ins for a match. And after unsuccessful tries at two different motels, the officer eventually found new information. I'm investigating a, um, a runaway juvenile okay. that supposedly checked into a local hotel okay. today with an adult, most likely. I don't know what he looks like or anything. Um, this is what she looks like. All right, someone checked in earlier when I, uh, when I wasn't here, so let me check out. Oh, perfect. Well, check out this, this person that checked in today. Oh, where's this guy? I think this is him. 
They said his name started with a T, possibly Tyler. At the third motel he checked, the officer noticed a guest checked in under the name Tyler Thompson with an address out of Orlando. This checked all the boxes with the information he had about the man, and so he went up to the room, and the door opened up to a very despicable scene. Sheriff's office, back up. Have a seat on the couch. What's up, sweetheart? Sheriff's office. Get Pappy up here. Go in the bedroom and wait for me for a second. How old are you? How old are you? In the arrest report, the officer detailed that immediately the 13-year-old saw the deputy. She ran towards him and latched onto his left arm, staying there during the duration of the arrest. She mentioned that her tummy was hurting, and while it wasn't clear yet what the man had done to the underaged girl, the officer was angered by his suspicions. How do you? If I ask you that question again, I'm gonna lose my mind. How old are you? Oh, you f***ed up. Yeah, you f***ed up real good. Yeah, and I go. Yes, I am. I found him. Yeah, boy. How old is he? Too old. Alright, I'm on the way. Copy. You sure you're okay, sweetheart? The 13-year-old was taken to a local Department of Children and Families facility for evaluation, and after she was medically cleared, she was taken home to her grandmother. Tyler Thompson, on the other hand, was taken into custody on a charge of interference with child custody and traveling to meet after using a computer to lure a child. He was released from the county jail on a $15,000 bail, but a year later, was found guilty on 30 counts of child sex crimes and was sentenced to 40 years in prison. But the next kidnapping scene was even more disturbing. I'm sorry, sir. I didn't... On August 16th, 2023, police were alerted by Louisville residents concerning screams coming from an apartment. Upon arrival, the police were unsure who exactly was screaming or what caused them to scream, but they had to get answers fast. The officers tried to kick down the door and windows, but they soon realized that the entire bottom floor was heavily barricaded. But as it was a two-story building, the officers came up with a plan that could eventually save the screaming person. We see a ladder. The officers noticed an already broken window, and suspecting the victim was in there, they decided that would be the perfect entry point. But this wasn't entirely true. The officers were responding to screams from a house with the entire bottom floor heavily barricaded. Whoever owned the apartment did not want anyone getting in, worse yet, cops. And with a scream from the apartment, it was highly likely that the homeowner and suspected kidnapper were inside waiting for them. Is it my else in there? He did what? Is he Hispanic? Yeah, he's got a the officer climbed into the broken window and met Joanna Wilson with a chain wrapped around her neck and secured with a padlock bolted to the floor. She informed the cops that she had gotten into an argument with her boyfriend, Moises May, who had tied her up and before leaving the house five hours prior, stated that when he came back, he was going to kill her. So while the cops tried to break off the padlock to free her, they knew that they were likely seconds away from a very violent altercation with the kidnapper. The police were able to remove the padlock from the grounded bolt and thereafter remove the other end with a bolt cutter. 
Upon further investigations, police discovered that the incident stemmed from an argument between the couple in the apartment they shared, where the suspect reportedly held the victim down forcibly, slapped her, and used a machete to cut her hair. Police began a hunt for Moises, and two days after the incident, he was arrested and charged with kidnapping, two counts of assault, terroristic threatening, and intimidating a participant in the legal process. He has since been transported to the Domestic Violence Unit for questioning with the police actively investigating the incident.